What's up guys? It's Friday and so you know what time it is. It's time for What The Fitness. Before we get into this week's topic, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment, follow the algorithm, and share. Today we have a video from an account at Dr. Ian Health Hacks. So already I'm triggered because of the word hack. Because the only health hacks there are are the hacks who are promoting BS. I, I, the term hack, biohack. This is a term used by charlatans to try to trick you into believing that there is this one neat trick or a few neat tricks that will fix your life. The shit that works is the shit that has worked. It's boring. It isn't sexy. It doesn't get a lot of views. It doesn't go viral. What goes viral is usually a bunch of bullshit because people like to share stuff that they feel is unique or special information that other people aren't privy to because it makes them look smarter so they can appear woke. Maybe Dr. Ian will surprise me, but I doubt it. So the title of the video is, is milk good for you? I'm sure there's not gonna be any bullshit in this video whatsoever. Today I wanna to talk to you about milk, on whether or not milk is good for you. You hear of commercials on TV where it says milk does the body good. There's a whole camp, a marketing campaign that promotes milk as being a healthy drink. I have a lot- By the way, there's marketing campaigns for pretty much every food. So this whole like, look out. This is like the vegan propaganda videos would be like, look how much marketing gets spent on animal products. And then the, the meat promoting videos would be like, look how much money gets spent on marketing the corn industry. They all market, get the over it. It doesn't matter. What matters is da -da -da -da, data. Because data, my friends, more important than your feelings. A lot of patients that come in who love to drink milk and they've done it all these years and there's been no um, allergic reactions. A lot of people get away from milk, they're forced to get away from dairy products because it's hard on your stomach. But when you break it down and and consider what a cow eats, they Today, eat junior. typically grains. Oh it's no, genetically grains. Modified grains, oh, genetically modified grains, whether it's grains. corn, soybean, or um, a wheat grains, they're all genetically modified and they're sprayed very heavily with glyphosate or herbicides that the cow eats. Also, the farmer um, injects growth hormones into the cow so that they can produce more milk because it's a business, obviously. All right, let's, so what do we got? We got genetically modified glyphosate growth hormone. Oh, oh my. So let's talk about these individual things because what you're having is fear-based language to scare you from drinking milk. And it sounds very scary. Genetically modified. Did you know that we've been genetically modifying foods for thousands of years? Now, we might not have called them GMOs, but we've been crossbreeding different kinds of crops for a long time to get more desirable characteristics out of the crops we want. I think people, when they hear genetic modification, they have this idea of like this evil scientist with big thick glasses injecting a a stalk of corn with chemicals. Yeah, that's not really how it works. The, the stuff they do just makes the plants more resistant to disease and, and, and all kinds of different things. For the most part, just increases crop yield and m the vast majority of meta-analyses show that GMOs do not have negative effects on health. Let's take glyphosate. Glyphosate, I think it's uh, the big common thing is, oh, it's at Roundup. Once again, dosage makes the poison. You can find studies that will correlate glyphosate intake with different diseases. You can also find correlations for virtually anything. If you torture the data enough, it will confess to what you want it to confess for. And as far as growth hormone goes, this is kind of like the idea that whatever the cow eats, you are then exposed to. That's not how biology works. All of these compounds are broken down into metabolites, that most of which are excreted. It's not like growth hormone just sits there in the tissue and then when you eat it, you get the growth hormone. It, that's not how it works, especially with something like growth hormone. Growth hormone is a peptide hormone. Yes, they inject it in the cows. Yes, they do it for various different benefits for milk production or whatever else. You are not seeing that growth hormone post the killing of the cow and then ingestion into your body because 
you're not getting like growth hormone one-to-one. -one. It's not like you're injecting yourself with growth hormone. In fact, growth hormone is a peptide, a protein. Proteins are broken down by stomach acid, pepsin and pepsinogen in the stomach, which are digestive enzymes, and then trypsin, chymotrypsin, and other proteases in the small intestine. They're broken down into mostly mono, di, and tripeptides, meaning one to three amino acids long. You are not getting the whole protein getting into circulation. If you did, you would have an immune response. Like that's what happens in people who have celiac. They have leaky gut and it allows that protein to trigger a response because it gets into circulation and it causes an immune response. If you were getting growth hormone just right into circulation, you'd actually have an immune response to it most likely. This idea that you're just like getting growth hormone into your body because you ate a cow that was injected with growth hormone is nonsense. Here's why none of that stuff even matters. Because he's trying to scare you with these individual little things. Well, you know what? We have this thing called data. We can look at milk intake and we can look at mortality. Because if what he's saying is true, if it's having a negative effect on your health, you should die earlier. In most of the meta-analyses, and in fact, there was a recent meta-analysis that broke it down as uh, umbrella meta-analyses of other systematic reviews, and they only included studies that were basically low bias and were met what they called an acceptable criteria in terms of bias and heterogeneity and a few other different variables. And they had acceptable, good, and very good studies included. They didn't throw in a bunch of junk. What they showed, there was no difference in the risk of mortality with milk intake up to like 200 grams per day, which is about a cup of milk per day. Once again, you would expect to see an increased risk if milk was causing all these problems. There are a few cohorts that show milk intake increases like risk of cardiovascular disease and some cancers, but that's almost exclusively with full fat milk, which is high in saturated fat. And that pretty much explains why there might be an association there. When they control for covariates like diet quality, exercise, BMI, these associations just go away. And in fact, in people who consume dairy, it's been shown that they have better bone density, better lean body mass, and are overall healthier. If the components of milk were causing all these problems that he's claiming, where is the actual outcome data? Because do we care about mechanisms or do we care about the actual human outcome data? Because I care about the human outcome data. Mechanisms are great, especially when they line up with the human outcome data. But if we have human outcome data, and the mechanisms don't line up with it, then the mechanisms don't mean All right, guys, hope you liked the video. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next week.